So we were at the Million People March today in downtown Toronto, and it was something. I strapped my GoPro on my chest and I wanted to give you a first-hand account of what was actually going on. One of the immediate things that I saw was that people who are just marching calmly to keep gender ideology out of schools were all showing their complete faces, they were not hiding who they are, they weren't hiding their identities. But then when I went over to the LGBTQIA plus side, everyone was masked, everyone wore glasses, everyone wore something to hide their face, which I just found pretty strange. Just pure speculation, but it could be maybe they're shy, maybe they don't want to be known for what they stand for. I'm not really sure why, but I guess it doesn't really matter why they hid their faces. Just found it strange. It was peculiar that you would, you're willing to come and protest, but not show who you are. Um, I mean, if you own this, if you are really proud of this movement, I would think that you would show your face. Doesn't matter. One of the most obvious things from both sides was that the banners that everyone was carrying around did not make sense. Uh, when I looked at people who were marching, the one million people marched for, for kids uh, to keep gender ideology and wokeness out of the school curriculum, their banner said, you know, hands off our kids, which I was like, hey, I get it. Maybe something else could have worked better. Like, I don't know, we can love one another while not pushing down gender ideology or we can protect trans kids as well as not confuse other kids. I don't know, something that's perhaps demonstrating our point better. But it was hands of our kids, parents have human rights. Like no one's contesting this, no one's necessarily taking that away. I know there are cases where CAS here in Canada has jumped in. They're dressing kids as soon as they arrive at school without the parents knowing uh, because we have friends that are teachers and they share these stories with us where they have to sign stuff where they're not allowed to contact the parents that their kids are getting dressed at school in other uniforms, uh, let's say boys wanting to be girls. So they're, the school actually with CAS gives them school clothes and this is happening in York region. Like another one of the banners read, trans rights are human rights, or trans rights are human rights. Now again, we don't deny that, we don't stand against that, we completely agree that human rights are human rights. Every human is entitled to human rights. Trans rights specifically, I would probably ask, well, what do you mean by that? Because what rights are you withheld from, especially here in Canada? Like, I, I, I didn't really get that one. Maybe someone can clarify in the comment section. Another one read, protect trans youth. Again, 100% agree. Like, yes, let's, let's protect trans youth. Uh, let's love them. Let's not, I mean, I, as a Christian, I would not necessarily affirm their actions. Uh, but regardless, there's a way you can care for one another without having to affirm their actions. My problem is when these gender ideologies are pushed down on normal kids, confusing them, and acting upon an assumption that a kid might might make that has life-altering consequences, like hormone blockers, you know, chemically, chemically castrating your kids. I mean, if I look at the analogy of a tattoo, like if my 10-year-old comes to me and says, man, I love Paw Patrol or I love SpongeBob SquarePants, I want a sleeve tattoo. I, as a parent, would probably be opposed to that. I would be like, you're a minor, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, it's a life changing or life altering decision to get a whole sleeve of SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, we would be opposed to them getting tattoos, yet as soon as it comes to uh, hormone blockers, parents aren't even involved anymore. Like you can get that without your parents' consent. So that's pretty alarming. Like, hey, so I get it. Protect trans kids, 100%. Let's protect all kids, all kids, while we understand what their mental capacity is, what they can say yes and no to at their age. While I was walking around, there was this Christian group there on their knees praying, uh, carrying around crosses. Now, I do want to comment on the crosses, but uh, here is one that said, no space for hate. Again, we're not hating on anyone. We're not, like, I think that's where we missed the boat. Like, I don't think the parties were aware of what we we're actually protesting for, or we were marching for something. Uh, but we are not hating on kids. We're not like all I'm saying is hey when you teach my kid how to read in grade one Let's not use a gender ideology plus book like let's not teach my kid how to read 
you might feel like a boy today. Your parents might say you were born a boy, but you can be a girl or anything else you want to. We don't need to teach our kids how to read with that type of material. That's what we are marching against. If you see that as hate, oh, I have so many questions for you. Then we get to the people with crosses walking around with like Jesus crucified over these people. Now, this is what it looked like, right? The person was walking with a cross facing the people all along their like area that they were protesting in, which just seemed as a Christian, I was like, man, it just, it just feels like you're bestowing upon people the judgment of Christ, which I, I yeah, but man, there's ways to do this. Um, but in that same breath, they were there, they stepped up, they actually came. But I do think in, in, in situations like these, there, there's maybe different ways that we can approach this that's perhaps better. Maybe it's one-on-one -on -one conversations, inviting people to the side like, hey, let's talk about this. Just a thought. One thing I appreciated about the side I was marching on was that they weren't rude to other people. I mean, there was this one guy while we were listening to a lesbian woman who had transitioned to a man um, and then after that had detransitioned. Now, I mean, it was too late, so she, she still looks like a man uh, from an outward um, appearance, uh, but they're also from the party um, Gays Against Groomers. And while they were speaking, you know, the, the LGBTQ side, uh, there was one individual who kept on. Uh, like, I walked up to him, like, you can check this clip out. And, like, he, he was going to town on us, uh, which was very inclusive. It was very, very welcoming of him to welcome and be inclusive of alternative thoughts and thinking. Do I have to move back? Losers! Losers! Cops are also losers! This person also kept on calling us losers. He called the cops losers for the cops just asking, hey, would you mind just standing there? Um, you know, don't cross a certain line. We just want to keep everything civil. Even though it's a public space, like, let's keep everything civil. Uh, let nothing, like, let's not let something happen. And then a cop came over to me to just ask, hey, like, what's all of this about? And you can check out the conversation here. I haven't had a chance to talk to you group. Oh, no, no, no. So essentially, it's, it's parents who don't want gender ideology in the schools. Uh, and then it's, I suppose, the... So this is the organized march. And then the, the opposing was just that because you guys are saying this, you guys are making a, I suppose, an unsafe place for trans kids in schools and stuff like that so what the march is essentially saying is well it's, it's not that we don't all we want is not to I suppose to a certain degree indoctrinate kids who are seven years old like my daughter was four when they asked her what her pronouns are what she identifies as um, she's five right now but but it's she can learn math basic school stuff not necessarily gender ideology so when a reading of a book is being told to kids in grade one right now in the current syllabus, the story that they're reading is, you might have been born a boy, but you don't have to be a boy. You can be a girl or anything else you want. All this side of the march is asking for is, can we not press that ideology on the kids? Uh, the sexual, not the sexualization, but the, the subjective matter of gender ideology should not be subjected to kids who we would say they are not allowed to get tattoos but they're allowed to get hormone blockers if they feel that way without the parents consent so essentially that side's marching let's not do this and then i suppose i'm not saying the other side saying let's do this they're more saying stop saying we shouldn't do this understood okay yeah i, I guess, appreciate I that i appreciate that. that yeah yeah like we we side of things. We, yeah. should, we just keep the peace. That's all For it is. For sure. Right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's always nice to talk to both groups to understand a little bit more of what's going on. Yeah. Because uh, obviously you, you can hear that you know, there is a separation between the two sides, right? Yes. So, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate the conversation. At the end of the conversation, I realized his last name was Eagle. And I was like, that, that's pretty sick last name. Um, man, what a great guy. He was gentle. He was respectful. Um, he just wanted to know. He just wanted to know what was going on on both sides. He wasn't necessarily sure why he's keeping the peace between these two parties like he just wanted to know what was going on and what was both of our sides they even interviewed my wife you know they were like hey as a mom you're here at this march like tell us your story and you know she was sharing that you know we we moved from south africa to canada to just provide a better and safer 
future for our kids, yet we come here and now there's an entirely different type of battle that we're fighting for our kids. You know, in South Africa it might be you're fighting for safety, you're fighting that your kids don't get raped, you know, you're, they can actually discriminate against white people where they would be like, hey, white people aren't allowed to apply for this job, you know, where we moved out of that and we came here <laughs> and now it's a thing where we're like, man, do we take our kid out of public school? Do we, do we homeschool her? Do we put her in a Christian private school, which is a lot of money? Like, what do we do? We then went on the actual march through Toronto, which was really fun. A lot of people actually joined us from the street and they started, you know, they, they, were, they were showing us like thumbs up signs. Uh, you know, some like I remember vividly this Staten daughter who was like, yeah, good job. Good job, guys. And, uh, you know, we were wondering through the entire beginning of the whole march, man, where are the Muslims? Uh, because like this was generated by them, the initial march. and the thought and getting it all together, rallying everything and stuff. And um, they played a big part in that. So then after our march around Toronto and we came back to Queens Park, man, then we found the other group there, like the other group of Muslims pr pr primarily who were um, standing up for their kids. And it was just encouraging to see as a Christian that, you know, we come together, stand shoulder to shoulder and advocate for our kids. And even though our religions differ vastly, uh, we came together for a common cause and say, hey, can we just please leave gender ideology and confusion out of schools that our kids can grow up with a normal education? If there are people or kids who are trans or going through certain gender dysphoria types, whatever that might be, sure, of course we want to save space for them. But we also want a space where we talk things through. And can we at least bring a little bit of reasonability and logic into the conversations at school and not just immediately assume that they have to be on hormone blockers or they have to be affirmed to feel like a dinosaur for a day or the next day they're a flurry in school and they need a litter box, which is actually happening here. Like, can we just use common sense? Can we just use science in school? Please, because that's that was my main thing. I want my kid to go to school and get an education. As far as ideologies and philosophies go on gender, on sex, on worldview morality stuff, that belongs with the parent. Because it's not the school's job to teach a subjective matter like gender ideology. And I intentionally say subjective matter because as an example, when people say gender is a social construct, it means nothing. Like it literally means nothing. Because you can't say there are more genders because it's a social construct, because the question then becomes who determines how many genders there are? Who has the authority to actually objectively say this is the amount of genders there are? Because two things true at, at the same time cannot both be true. If it's a subjective matter, I can say there are two genders because I'm part of society. I can say there are two genders and I wouldn't be wrong. And you can say there are 50 genders and you wouldn't be wrong either. So am I right to say there are two while you're also right to say there are 50? See, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It has to be grounded in something objectively true, like chromosomal biology. Like that's what I'm getting at. Like I don't subscribe to the idea that gender is a social construct because it means nothing to say that. Because as soon as you say that, there is no body that holds authority within the whole gender realm. We're just confusing people and we're basing education off of something that is subjective, that does not hold any weight or validity to it. Which individual is actually determining and championing a subjective ideology? Because no one can claim it. No one can claim truth within it because it is subjective and it remains subjective. A last story, as me and my wife were leaving towards our car, <laughs> this, uh, he says he's a pastor, or you know, he was in full-time ministry. I'm not sure exactly what he, what he did, uh, but he was coming to tell us, uh, <laughs> I'm not actually entirely sure what he told us, but he was like of the mind that America's mentioned in the Bible. His documents that he gave me were like America was spelled wrong. Oh, he said anyone with brain cells can actually figure out that America is in the Bible because of the United States. Anyway, I turned my GoPro on. I, I wanted to engage him, but I did not want to engage him. I was done. The day was long. Uh, 
so when he didn't bring up another topic when i turned the gopro on i was waiting for the next topic and when he never brought one up i was like i'm out of here i'm done i thought my wife wouldn't want me to engage in a debate thing right there when we left she was like why didn't you say something i was like oh man next time anyway this was our trip to the march how it was what it looked like uh, my personal opinion about it do with it as you will this video will probably get banned we'll see